subscribe. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Leo Video Diaries. This is episode 8. Um, in this episode, just going to be talking about the American dream, um, cost of living, um, and also navigating young adult friendships as a Gen Z. So that's basically what this episode is about today. So to kick things off, I want to discuss the first thing, the job market. So I've been hearing reports, claims really that the job market is doing well. A lot of people are getting jobs, more jobs have been created than ever before. But in spite of all that, the cost of living is still rising. Um, so throughout the video, some topics might be interconnected. Um, so if I'm discussing one topic, another topic might come out that might be related to that same topic. So about the job market. Job market is doing well, so they say. Um, but if that's the case, then why aren't people being compensated fairly for their their job? All these jobs have been created. Why aren't the environments more conducive? Why aren't they promoting growth for employees? Because you can have a job, but if they're not being paid or compensated for their work. What's the point of being there? You know, um, there should be jobs that pay people fairly so they can live accordingly uh, to how they want to live, really. Because things are just getting too expensive these days. It's hard to even live because you're constantly having to work either more shifts or extra jobs on the side to accommodate for, you know, the living costs, especially over here in America. Um, when it comes to the economy, there have been claims that the economy is doing fairly well. Um, not sure of that. Because if it is, why do we have inflation? That's the one thing I want to know. If we're having such a great economy, if the job market is doing well for itself, then why is there inflation? Why, why are prices going up? That doesn't make sense to me. That's basically an ongoing topic I hear in different conversations every single day. And even on the news, like, if you really, if we have a prosperous economy and job market, then it should reflect in the prices in our cost of living if we don't have environments where it's not ideal for working conditions this is jobs now then it wouldn't make sense for them to boast about an economy being good and jobs being created while we do need jobs we need better conditions we need better pay so that's kind of my two cents on that i felt like a broken record talking about that i might need to look more into that because i don't really have that much of an expertise on that um now we're gonna go hop right into the conversation about adult friendships especially post high school and college i've been out of high school for almost 10 years now so yeah um a lot of dynamics and social relationships have changed since then and even college not too long ago it's been over two years now for me um how I keep up with people I knew from school typically is through social media. That's really where 
um, I keep up with everybody or at least try to um, every now and then maybe I'll text somebody or I'll meet friends to somebody I knew from school and you know we promise to keep in touch but you know we don't always you know follow through with that because life gets in the way and I think that's kind of what has happened um, it's not that people grow apart it's just that life just gets in the way you won't really have time to talk and hang out and catch up because um we're in a different space now um you know we're at this age where you know we can't get married we can't have kids we can you know study a new job new career um or advance in the career that we have so that's kind of where i'm at right now and where some of my peers are at too because a lot of people from school most of them i know are getting married most of them have their first kid most of them are doing well in their careers and their lives so that's kind of the point where we're at um so we won't always have time to keep ties on each other um and if we do it might be like a monthly occurrence or a yearly occurrence um depending on how long you knew the person um so i guess the main solution is really to keep in contact whenever you can really social media is probably the best way to keep in contact with someone because you can see in real time you know what they're doing um, because they post updates almost every week, so that's just how it is with that. Um, that kind of leads me into the segue about the loneliness epidemic, and this is not just a Gen Z thing, this is an intergenerational thing. We are living in a time period, you know, because of COVID, that um, a lot of people are lonely, a lot of people feel disconnected from each other. I can attest to this. Um, I know I'm an introvert, and you know, hasn't really affected me greatly but every now and then I get my you know sense of loneliness but to those that may not be the same way as me or have a different personality the loneliness epidemic is greater we feel disconnected from each other more than ever um due to the advancement of social media due to COVID and the lockdowns um it definitely has you know put a number and a toll on how we relate to each other socially and emotionally on top of that you got the political circus um and other cultural wars that are happening that cause people to be way more divided than ever. And on top of that, you know, we live in America. It's an individualistic society. We, we pride ourselves off, off of individualism and, you know, do what thou wilt and YOLO and, you know, freedom. That um, that those are also driving factors into the um, loneliness epidemic as well. People really forgot how to socialize. Um, you know, you have to basically pull teeth just to make plans or to call someone on the phone. Um, we live in what I call the recluse generation, Gen Z, my generation, because we basically grew up with technology and we've been conditioned to live life through a screen. It makes it difficult to initiate those contacts, to, you know, initiate those friendships because we're used to the comfort of being in our house and being at home. And believe it or not, that has its place, you know, because you, you don't want to deal with the drama and the craziness that comes with relationships. But at the same time, you know, there's other ways to, you know, socialize. I, I know um, in the 2000s and 2010s, the area that I grew up in, I know clubbing was more popular. Um, that was the norm um, for a, a while, but even club culture is dying out as well. Like nobody wants to go to the club anymore. I didn't really start clubbing really until my 21st birthday. And that was a little over three years ago. I was too young for the club when I was younger. Um, only knew Barbie dolls and stuff like that. But, um, for those that are a little bit older than me, um, my generation, even before that was the norm. But even then there's other ways to socialize. Um, I know like they, like, uh, apps like Eventbrite and other little, meetup apps they there's always they're always advertising like festivals and um um almost lost my train of thoughts like festivals and um uh different events uh and any other type of social event especially in the dmv area where i live there's always something going on especially in places like uh the dc area nation's capital there's always something going on the the they have concerts, uh, wine tastings. Um, there's a whole bunch of outdoor activities that you can do. Um, hiking, you can do bike riding, uh, you can do boating. Uh, they have tournaments, you know, they have anything. 
and that's a great opportunity to meet people um and also i guess some reason why people um my private illness epidemic and i got my notes here just to kind of help me out um people i guess don't want to be hurt people don't want to have to you know they're just afraid of just stepping out um and making that connection and it can be nerve-wracking because you want the other person or party to connect to you before you do with them or they feel like there's really no reason to connect with anybody anymore because like everybody's not true and sincere I'm not gonna understand that because sometimes i feel that we do them like what's the point of socializing but we need to do it because as humans we literally that's literally how we survive we are naturally wired for social connection um i guess people nowadays are yearning authenticity um as opposed to you know uh, superficiality fakeness so that's kind of where we are when it comes to relationships especially as a young adult it won't hit the same like uh it did when we were younger because we all grew up in the same area you know we saw each other every day at school or other social groups and we had time but obviously with the passage of time um we're in a different space where we have more responsibilities so we we'll won't always have the time to connect you know because we're too busy trying to build up our lives and what we want it to be um the last one i'm going to make in today's episode is about the success the american dream um and i know for many years um we've been told especially over here in america and i'm pretty sure other western countries that you know but specifically in america you know to be successful you have to have the white picket fence you have to have the kids you have to have the six figures you got to have the ideal job on the 12th floor with the perfect office space um you have to drive a bentley and that makes you successful perpetuated also by celebrity culture um we won't get into that a little later in another episode but that's kind of how we were told and we were conditioned um but the, the pandemic has taught us that, you know, there's more than one way to be successful and that kind of, you know, slowed down the craziness that we call the rat race because in America, that's what we live in nowadays. That's why we have to work the three jobs and deal with the harsh job conditions in order to achieve the American dream. And that's not always possible for most people. And I realized lately that, you know, due to the rise of, you know, small businesses, there's more than one way to be successful. You don't have to climb the corporate ladder or, you know, go the traditional mainstream way. You don't have to go to college if you don't want to. You can literally just go right to the workforce or even if you want to go to a trade school, if that's your choice. But there's many ways to be successful. You don't have to have a six-figure job for that. Um, simply just waking up in the morning, simply just going out in nature, simply, you know, overcoming a certain habit or addiction, that that's being successful. Um, you know, just being able to provide for your family, being able to, you know, enjoy life. Uh, that enjoying the small things, cherishing the small things, that's, that's what being successful is all about. Um, because success is different for everybody. Everybody has a different idea of success. There's really no one view of success. Um, that's why I see the American dream is dying because like I said, the cost of living is going up. Um, jobs aren't paying enough. Um, so it's kind of hard to attain the American dream. We have all of these different obstacles and factors that are preventing you from having the American dream. You have to be a certain color because you know, unfortunately in America, we're still having a hard time dealing with our racist past. Um, which leads me to my last point about the soft life because, excuse me, people don't desire not to hustle with the American dream or be part of grind culture. We desire to have a soft life being, you know, we don't dream of labor. We, we work less to enjoy life more. Or as they say, over in Europe, they, uh, live, they work to live. Here in America, we literally live to work. In order for us to live, we have to work. Whereas in Europe, they work in order for them to have a life. In America, we are always on 24 seven because unfortunately we live in a capitalistic society over here in America. You know, if, if they don't have the jobs, they don't have the workers to keep the companies running, um, 
then we won't have any resources. You won't have any homes. America would basically die out as a country because, you know, they don't have anybody, have any workers. In order to keep the country running and going, we gotta have workers. Um, so I'll be real, I wanna have a soft life, but I know my reality is right now, in order for me to even attain that, I have to make sure I have a stable job and income in order to have that life. Um, eventually it will come um, because I'm learning day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour, um, how to live more mindfully and to not feel like I have to constantly be on the clock. I'm, I'm deconditioning myself from the matrix of the American dream right now. Um, it's a, it, it's obviously a daily process. It's not going to happen overnight. And I'm pretty sure for those of you that, you know, are in the grind culture as well, you're learning different ways to live more mindfully and less like a robot and being a slave to this American dream capitalistic culture. But um, yeah, those are just some of my thoughts. Um, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below about, you know, the American dream the job market, um, how to navigate adult, you know, friendships and relationships um, as we get older. Um, and please uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I upload these video diary episodes every Wednesday. So be on the lookout um, for these video diary episodes. And I also upload or plan to upload every single day. So I will see you on the next video. Subscribe.